Welcome to Archaeotech Assimilation, where we discover and investigate the technology of the Imperium and the tools of chaos. Hello everyone and welcome to Iron and Sarah Mike present Archaeotech Assimilation, the show where we look at all sorts of things that are cool throughout the hobby. Uh, my name is John and today we've got a full crew. I'm joined by Shane. Hello. Tom. Hello. Dave. Hello. And Glenn. Right. Hello guys. So this episode we're going to look at episode two of Angels of Death, the animated series focusing on the Blood Angels. And this episode is called The Silent City. Um, so quickly, did everyone enjoy this one? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a bit short for my liking, yeah. but I think the content was really good. Yeah, I think obviously it's short. I think eventually when we get to binge watch the whole series, it'll be like a short film, won't it? So the short episode won't hopefully hurt it too much later on. How, how many episodes view. were there, John? Do you remember with this being made? Or do you not know yet? Or do we not know? Um, I'm going to say six. six maybe. I'm yeah. sure I heard six. Might be wrong. Uh, I we'll thought it. Is it eight? Possibly. Yeah. That might just be wishful thinking. Yeah, maybe. Well, we'll, we'll certainly see, won't we? Um, so continuing with the format we've been doing on these Warhammer Plus uh, episodes, we'll be taking a look at the beats through the story uh, and then talking about what we liked and disliked. So take this as your spoiler warning. Because the episodes are only short, we won't. We won't recap the first episode, other to say that the Astartes on board the Sword of Bow. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. There's a reason we're laughing. It's because I've done this three times and I've said <laughs> all every time. So they uh, descend onto the planet below in search of their missing captain. So let's begin. Um, so we get a nice cinematic view right at the beginning um, of the uh, flotilla out in space on the orbiting um, station where you can just see the two drop pods come out of the Astartes ship uh, like two um, drops of blood they're the only bit of colour that we get heading towards the uh, surface below. Um, as they're hurtling towards the surface Chaplain Raphael is reciting oaths to those in his ship and one of the drop pods smashes through a tower sending them off course. Uh, the ship crew detects successful landing but due to the planet storms they cannot uh, communicate with the Astartes below. Uh, the ship mistress then orders that they detach from the tower spire ready to extract the blood angels when called on um, and then on the surface the planet is found to be completely in ruin and they say that the atmosphere is too toxic for humans and the blood angels moved out but they know they're being watched. Um, so the, the ship mistress is becoming agitated that the ship is not yet disengaged uh, and demands to know what's going on. At this time, a transport called the Bounty breaks formation, ignoring orders uh, to return to position. And the captain of the Bounty breaks through on the box and screams that they have been taken over by mutineers. And the flotilla is compromised. As several more ships turn on the sort of bow, bringing the weapon systems online. I've got to say on that, um, when we encountered these I know we're, we're going to find out what they are, yeah. these guys. Literally, he's the worst acting I've ever seen of somebody trying to be a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the Blood Angels are uh, investigating a desecrated church. Uh, then a tank rocks up and Tom, the Imperial Guard, uh, are riding on board and they want to know why the, uh, the Blood Angels have come. Um, it's like they're, they're, try, they're trying to kid the Blood Angels into thinking yeah. that they're still friendly so that they can obviously get them into a trap. But he, he puts on this most sinister voice you've ever heard, like, hello. <laughs> 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 but it, it starts back as well, because they literally go to, we didn't ask you to come, we didn't need any help. And then they flip flip the coin and say, well, come back to the tower with us and uh, we'll, we'll go and talk as friends. Um, yeah, so obviously he's telling them, like, it's not safe. And completely, like, off the bat, the Astartes realise that there's something wrong and they just shoot them straight away. I think um, the good thing about that is that you can tell that, it, obviously, the guy that's been in a death watch, he knows his Xenos and the way they behave, I think. Mm. Uh, all the others were a bit unsure still and sort of willing to trust, it seems. But he yeah. clicked straight away and he was like, no, nah, I ain't having that. Yeah. Um, you can see it as well because like, it sort of zooms into 
his helmet and he's having, and he's like watching the guy talk and mm. he can like by the way his mouth's moving he obviously picks up the lie um, and unfortunately for him like the other squad of Astartes hear the gunfire and head towards their location one of the um, Astartes knocks one of his brothers out of the way and takes a tank shell to the chest um, for his efforts uh, and he gets stunned for a moment but then he jumps right into action towards the tank uh, dispatching mm. people with his chainsaw. Um, but he does have another little flashback. It looked like that was Kazarian, and I think he had another little yeah. flash of the uh, Black Rage potentially coming on. So it's uh, yeah. obviously yeah. going to be a theme there. That's, that's going to happen at some point, right? That's mm, going to be his definitely. Art. You, yeah. What do you think? He's that. not coming off the planet. Yeah, look at you getting all excited about it, Tom. <laughs> yeah, mate, that's going to be awesome. If he flips out, I said I just got this thing in my mind about him and Unkaius coming to blows at the end because it's been a bit like that between a minute. So in the first episode, we'll see. Yeah. Um, and then, so he gets up to the tank ready to, to destroy it, and he gets surprised by a gene stealer. Um, mm-hmm. And the traitor guard are about to retreat until the second unit of Blood Angels arrive, cut them down. Standing over the corpse of the dead gene stealer, they announce that the enemy has revealed itself, and now they are looking into the face of the devourer. The sword of Bao still has not disengaged from the docks, and the crew panic when they realize they are now being boarded by mutineers. Uh, and that, like we said, it's a quick episode, um, but a good one. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I liked the bit when they're in the drop pods and they're going down and one of them hits like a building. And like, um, like you just imagine if you were a normal person, that you would be shitting your pants. And they're just like, yeah, it's fine. It's within yeah. normal operating and back they go. And I was like, you know, that it's just, it is, well, for me, it encapsulated everything you want from like a space marine and, and probably a blood angel for you, Tommy. But I, you know, you, I'll let you speak on that one. But it just showed like, you know, badass. It's great. Yeah. I, th- I thought, um, it, it was like my only thing is obviously, like Dave's already touched on it, it was a little bit short. But, um, we've, you know, we spoke about this before. It's going to be like that. It's, they're going to build it up. They're not going to put everything on at once. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm okay with that, really. Uh, I thought the episode was really cool. And my favorite bit by far was when um, the chaplain Raphael arrives and the music comes on and a guy just turns around and he's like, oh, fuck, <laughs> head explosion time. And that was just so cool, seeing him there. Like, just that, I'd say the look on his face, but obviously it's a helmet, but yeah. it just it looked so cool. But my thing as well is that it, it was nice to see um, a star to see sort of how they are in books, where they're very, very powerful and, and knowledgeable and, and could take out a tank and a load of guardsmen as if it's nothing. Um, mm. So that was quite, it was almost sort of like reminded me of how the books, are, the Astartes are in the books and in law, where, mm. where they are really powerful, obviously, where we're playing a lot of tabletop. If you mm. stuck a five, five mm. Astartes against a tank and a load of cars, and it probably wouldn't end very well. But it, it sort of reminded me of that, which is quite nice. Mm. It, it reminds me, do you remember? Um, I know we've both read it, Dave, Space Wolf, when um, Ragnar destroys the tank and all them, yeah. them soldiers yeah. quite near the beginning. It's not yeah. sort of like similar to that, isn't it? Yeah. Where are we hoping that it goes from here then? What are you, what are you wanting to see into episode three? I'm wanting to see them beef up the sound effects a bit more. Yeah. Am I the only one that thinks the chainsaw sounds like the most pathetic hedge trimming piece of crap yeah. ever? <laughs> nowhere near me. Yeah. Like, I do like the fact that all the different patterns of bolters sound different. Because one's got a stalker, one's got a normal bolter, you know, and they all sound different. But the chainsaw, oh my God, it was just, nee, that was it. It was like, oh, come on, where's the meat in that? I want that hacking through people. It should be epic. Yeah, I agree. I think also that's similar with the um, the heavy bolter as well. I know it's got to be faster than the others, but it, it could have been a bit deeper. I think the stalker yeah. bolter was excellent. Though. I love the sound of that. But story wise, no idea. I want to see them fighting some proper genius series because that was only a hybrid that they first saw. Right. Um, so it's sort of like halfway between man and Steeler. We've only seen like the proper Steelers at the start of the first episode, whenever the captain was, you know, slapping them about with one arm. Mm. So I want to see like mass fight with. Load of gene stealers, load of blood angels. Some are going to die. It's inevitable. Yeah. But do you think the um, the main battleship's getting taken out, or do you think they'll they'll survive? Uh, no, they'll survive. Yeah. Yeah. They'll unleash the um, what was his name? 
Ignis. Oh, the, the dread. The oh, dread. The dreadnought. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. He'll, he'll purge the ship of heretics. That'll oh. be good to see. That's going to be that'll be epic if he is w- w- just booting around the ship, ripping heads off. Am I also the only person that had a slight laugh and went, nah, mutiny on the bounty? Yeah. <laughs> That's all yeah. right. Yeah. Because I was like, it's a very oh, weak joke. <laughs> oh, there's a mutiny. Oh, haha. I see what they've done there. Very terrible. <laughs> Oh, right. So um, that's episode two. Has anyone got any other final <laughs> thoughts on this episode? No, no I, I think decent episode. Going in the right direction. It's definitely sort of the first one set it out very well. And then this sort of building the tension and I think it was done really well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Cool, me too. Um, brilliant. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us on this episode. Um, as always, please check us out. Stick us into Google, Iron and Ceramite. We're on Instagram. Come and follow us and see what we're all up to. If you want to chat to us, come join us on Facebook or Twitter. Um, If you're watching this, obviously, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Um, We do have a podcast, so check us out wherever you get your podcast. And we talk about our uh, hobby progress and then all other sorts of bits and pieces. Um, We're on Twitch. We try and play a few games on there. So come sign up to us on there. If you really like what we're doing, we're on Patreon. So you can subscribe to us on there if you want to help us um, improve our channel throw, throw us a subscribe um, and then as a thank you we'll stick your name in the credits to promote you same if you do um, do the hobby and you like to paint or other bits and pieces go onto element games where you can get your hobby goods at a discount and after a while we'll get a bit of a kickback as a thank you for sending you there and if you play combat cards download it if you don't join our clan iron and ceramite and come play some card games with us Thanks for joining us and we will see you on the next one. As always, we would like to thank you for listening to our Iron and Ceramite podcast. If you liked us, then you can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and any other good podcast services. Just remember, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war.